Hey guys, Violet here with another episode of True Crime and Art. Today we are talking about another lady that um, is terrifying. She is from the 1800s. I should know that. I'm just double checking. Her name is Jane Toppin. Now she goes by a couple of different names. We're going to get into it. But as a reminder, this story is not for kids. It's true crime. There's lots of um, uh, M-U-R-D-E-R -E going on, so not for kids. Pass on. Uh, adults, though, let's get into it. I hope you guys can't hear the rain outside. Um, I live in South Louisiana, and it's been raining for like two months straight. And so I guess I should be used to it by now, but it's just... Anyway, it's raining. I hope you guys can't hear it. You might hear some thunder. Just pretend like it adds to the ambiance, okay? And so in that spirit, I'm going to be doing a painting that's a rainy day painting. And if you're looking at my canvas and you're like, what? what's going on, Violet? It's because I took another canvas and I just primed it again because I am going through some canvases and I don't have anywhere to put these things. So we're just going to reuse, right? Recycling is cool. So let's get to it. Now I'm going to try to do this a little differently. I'm still trying to find my way through here. Uh, we are going to go ahead and put another little coat of white on here. All right. Now I've also decided that I'm going to put my outtakes at the end of the video. So if you guys want to check out um, all the mistakes I make, which there are a lot and they're pretty funny, uh, make sure to watch the whole video. You'll be able to see at the end some of uh, Idiot Violet at her best work. Yeah, it's kind of covered. Perfect. As I said at the start of the video, we are talking about Jane Toppin. When she was born, she was actually born, I'm going to try, Honora Kelly. Her family were Irish immigrants, and she was born in Massachusetts. Oh, goodness, sorry, in uh, 1854. Now, back in the day, being of Irish descent was not a good thing. Her mom's name was Bridget and her dad's name was Peter. And she had, it's kind of hard because in these older stories, trying to find actual real details about people, it, it's difficult. So um, the story that I put together for you guys is are the most common facts that I found. So Jane, she had two sisters, Delia, and an unnamed older sister. Uh, Jane was the youngest, okay? So when Jane was, I believe, still an infant, her mom died of tuberculosis. Now, her dad, he did not handle it well, which I, I wouldn't either. Um, he was an alcoholic. He was, unfortunately, uh, abusive to the girls. And uh, he, was, he was pretty crazy. He was pretty crazy. Uh, later in life, he sewed his eyelids shut. He had his own demons. When Jane was two and Delia was eight, their father, Peter, surrendered them to an orphanage. And back in the day, this orphanage was called the Boston Female Asylum. So that sounds even worse than orphanage, I think. Um, he surrendered both of them and he never, ever saw them again. Now, there's not a lot of information about their time in the orphanage. The notes from the orphanage said they came from a very bad home. Okay, well, that's kind of obvious. So thanks for that. Thanks for all that information, orphanage. Jane, she was liked amongst her friends at the orphanage, but she was also... Um, a liar. She was a compulsive liar. So this started very early on in her young age. Her sister Delia was supposedly a sex worker in the orphanage or through the orphanage or with the orphanage. It wasn't really clear. I just, I couldn't find that information out. The older sister that I couldn't find any names for, she ended up being committed into a mental institution as well. So the whole family is, is obviously on the struggle bus. Guys, I did it again. I got freaking paint on the floor now. Oh, God. One, one second. One second. Okay, fun fact. Some of that paint's dry. So that means I didn't do it today. And we're going to put some right here because this is going to be something. Just trust me. After the oldest daughter is committed to the orphanage, then the father, he ends up being committed to the orphanage. Her father ends up being committed to an insane asylum. He doesn't go to the orphanage. He goes to an insane asylum. Get it together, Violet. In 1862, when Jane was eight years old, 
she was given to the Toppen family as an indentured servant. So apparently it was common practice that orphans were given to families for them to, I guess, live with so that the parents can take care of them, but they're not really adopting them. They're just an indentured servant. So a slave, a slave. So the family that Jane went with was the Toppen family. The matriarch was Anne Toppen, and she was not a kind lady, at least not to Jane. Uh, she was very, she didn't love that Jane was Irish, first off. So that's whenever Jane officially became Jane, because Honora was way too Irish for Miss Anne Toppen. And then they gave Jane the surname Toppen. Now, they still never adopted her, but, you know, they didn't want their friends to know that they had an Irish person working in their house, that would be, that would be the end of the world, folks. The Toppins had a daughter named Elizabeth, and she was about the same age as uh, Jane. And Elizabeth was pretty kind to Jane. They became fairly close. They referred to each other as um, their adoptive sisters. Now, don't get, don't get it twisted. Jane was still the servant. So Jane still waited on Elizabeth. Jane still um, did her laundry, uh, cleaned her room, brought her food. So I don't know how much of a sister that can be, but Jane said that Elizabeth was nice to her at this point. Whenever Jane was 18 years old, she was freed from her indentured servitude and the Toppins gave her $50 to start her new life. Well, at this point, Jane decided to stay with the Toppin family because, I mean, really, where is she going to go? What's she going to do? Um, she ends up staying for another 10 years and serving Elizabeth because of, at this point, Anne has passed away. So now Elizabeth is in charge of the family. And so Jane is helping Elizabeth. Well, at 10 years go by and Jane decides that she is going to go to nursing school. In 1885, when Jane is 31 years old, she begins training as a nurse at Cambridge Hospital. And she was known as really well-liked and friendly. Um, the patients loved her. She was very charming. And this is where she got her nickname, Jolly Jane, because people legitimately liked being around her. She was so positive and upbeat and nice, and she loved her patients. Well, two sides to this coin. So at first, of course, everybody liked her because she was Jolly Jane. Well, the longer that she was at that hospital and the more the people got to know her, they realized that she was a horrible gossip and she liked to turn her friends against each other and start all kinds of messy drama. So her fellow students started to detest her. Now, the higher up still liked her because she was a, a suck up, essentially. During nursing school, the nurses had to observe autopsies. You guys know what an autopsy is? It's where they look at a, a dead body and try to figure out what happened to it. Why, why did that person die? Well, the nurses have to observe them. The hospital administration started to become a little concerned at this point because Jane loved autopsies. So anytime there's an autopsy, oh, me, me, me. That was a little strange because generally the nurses didn't love them. So that kind of put her on the hospital's radar. Also at this point that the hospital did not know was Jane was starting to experiment with her patients. Violet, what do you mean experiment? Well, she was using morphine and atropine to overdose her patients. So morphine would slow their heart rate and put them to sleep. And it's a really strong pain medication. And then atropine would raise their heart rate and basically wake them up. So Jane, oh, y'all, I said I, I prefer doing female killers because they did it for like really fascinating reasons and it was never sexual. Well, this is like really one of the only female serial killers that did it because of sexual reasons. So she got a sexual thrill out of, this is what she said, bringing her patients close to death and then and watching the life go out of their eyes and then bringing them back to life. Yeah, crazy. All right, guys, let me um, block in this umbrella, okay? One patient during this time would later say that she had Jane as a nurse and she fell asleep. Well, after Jane gave her a really bitter tasting medicine, she fell asleep. 
and she woke up to Jane laying in the bed next to her, kissing all over her face. Apparently, whenever this patient woke up, it scared Jane and she got up and left. Now, I don't know why the patient didn't report it beforehand, but they later did. Probably when all the other stuff come out, the patient was like, oh, wait, that happened to me too. About this point, Jane was let go from Cambridge Hospital because her patients started to die at a higher rate than other nurses. So she moved to Massachusetts, guys, I have so, so much trouble saying this, Massachusetts General Hospital. That didn't last long because she was let go for recklessly administering opiates. Like, just let go because of that? I, okay. Now, even though she was let go for this reason, it didn't stop the higher ups from recommending her as a private nurse to their wealthier clients. Now that worked great for Jane because as a private nurse, she started making $25 a week when a regular nurse was making $5 a week. So that that's a lot, that's a lot. Outside of work, Jane was very drunk. They said she constantly guzzled beer, which I kind of thought that was hilarious, like guzzled beer. Of course she liked to gossip because she did that at work, so she's gonna do that outside of work. And oh, this was so annoying. They kept uh, referring to her as uh, unattractively plump. Now, you know, if you watched me for a little bit and you saw the um, Lonely Hearts Killer video, I don't know why, I guess, America has always had a problem with a rounder lady. What if I told you you were unattractively normal? What? Come at me. Oh God, people are gonna come at me in the comments. Sorry, I take it back, take, sorry. Jane then moved in with an elderly couple and uh, strangely, the husband died and she lived with his widow for two years. Her name was Lovey. And about two years into it, Jane was heard saying that Lovey had become feeble and fussy and old and cranky. So she killed her. How did she kill her? Well, her favorite way to kill someone was uh, either with morphine, atropine, or strychnine. She had added a new poison to her repertoire. Let me do a little bit more here. Cute. We'll come back and add some highlights later. Why am I singing so much? I don't know. I don't know, folks. At this point, Mary is still working as a private nurse and she has lots of clients that are recommending her to other people because she's so kind and so sweet. Um, in 1889, seven-year-old Mary McLear is recommended to uh, Jane. She was recommended by a local doctor because Jane was one of the best nurses around. Well, Jane poisoned her. One month later, uh, Jane wanted to earn some more money, so she killed a close friend of hers who had a job at a dining hall. Uh, so Jane killed this friend so that she could take her job. Now you're like, how did that happen? Well, Jane calls the dining hall and says, they didn't have the friend's name, and says, uh, she's going on vacation and she wanted me to fill in for her. So the dining hall manager's like, sure, great. Jane goes to work, to work in the dining hall. She is promptly fired for incompetence and because she's stealing money. Now, remember when I said that Jane and Elizabeth were close? Well, Jane would often visit her sister, or adoptive sister, Elizabeth. Um, and on one visit to the beach, uh, the beach house that Elizabeth owned, um, Elizabeth said that she was not feeling well. And Jane said, you know what? You, you probably have a little bout of depression. Let's, let me make you a lunch. We'll go on a picnic. So Jane made a lunch and brought some mineral water. And she gave her just enough poison to make her really sick. And Jane kept giving her more and more poison to elongate the process of killing Elizabeth. And Elizabeth died in Jane's arms. And Jane would end up saying that it gave her a great thrill to watch the life fade from her eyes. Uh, later, Jane would say that Elizabeth was the only person that she killed out of hatred, and that's why she elongated her death, because she could not stand Elizabeth, which that is some long-term planning stuff there. Oh, my goodness. Now, as soon as Jane gets back to uh, Elizabeth's home, Jane moves in on Elizabeth's now widower. His name is Ormel. 
Ormel, I think that, yeah, Ormel. Um, she starts to basically put the moves on Ormel, and Ormel is not having it. He wants no part of it. So Jane's bright idea is, you know what? I'm going to move in with them, and I, them, meaning Ormel, his sister, and their housekeeper. So Jane moves in with them, and Jane kills the 72-year-old housekeeper and then takes up her duties because she's like, I'm going to show Ormel that I'm a great housekeeper and I would therefore make a great wife. Ormel, again, not having any of it, is like, no, I don't, I don't want to marry you. You know, Jane at this point is ticked. And so she tells Ormel, marry me or I'm going to tell everyone that you got me pregnant. Ormel didn't fall for it. So Jane has one more trick up her sleeve. She starts to slowly poison Ormel because her thought is, I'm going to, I'm going to nurse him back to health and then he'll love me and want to marry me. That doesn't work out. She, Ormel officially kicks her out of the house. And then Jane has a feeble attempt of dosing herself with mor morphine. Now, the reason why I say it's a feeble attempt, attempt and don't come at me is because she has at this point killed lots of people and she knows exactly how much to dose. She does just enough to be put into the hospital, trying to get sympathy from Ormel. Doesn't work again. So Jane moves on with her life. Let me add some white. How's that look? Oh, cool, kinda like it. Okay, I'm gonna chill and see if I need to add anything later because I'm just making it crazy. In 1901, Jane moves into a cottage owned by the Davis family. Now this was uh, a cottage that was behind their house. So inside the main home where Mr. and Mrs. Davis and their three adult daughters live there, okay? So Jane lives in the cottage in the back. Now she lived there a couple months and she kept borrowing money from the Davis family and not paying them rent. Uh, she had borrowed this money for supplies for her nursing things and supplies to kill people. But uh, so Maddie Davis, who is the, the wife, the mom, she goes to go talk to Jane about getting some rent, maybe a payment so she can, they can start being paid back. Well, Jane is an excellent talker. She invites Maddie in, gives her some lunch, some mineral water. <sighs> yeah, she, she poisons Maddie. Maddie dies very quickly because she really poisons her. At this point, Jane moves into the main house because this is her MO, right? She moves into the main house to take care of Mr. Davis. This whole family trusts Jane because she's a nurse. And why would they suspect her? Why? They have no reason to. Well, uh, the youngest daughter is distraught by her mother's death. So Jane says, let me give you something to help you sleep and to help you feel better. Poison. Dead. Another daughter comes to Jane. Jane, I'm so sad. My sister and my mother are dead. I, I'm so depressed. Jane says, let me give you something to help you with that. Poison. Dead. Now, the dad, Mr. Davis, comes to Jane. Jane, I, I, I've lost three family members. What? Oh my gosh, I've lost three. I'm so upset. What do I do? Um, Jane says, let me give you something for that. Poison. Dead. There's one daughter left. This daughter is starting to get a little suspicious. Um, and she miraculously has an aneurysm. Poison. Dead. So Jane continues to live in the house, even though the entire Davis family is dead. Um, Maddie Davis's father-in-law suspects foul play. I don't understand why he's the per first person to suspect foul play. This entire family just died. Random. So the father-in-law requests an autopsy done on everyone. On the autopsy, it shows that they all died of morphine and atropine poisoning. Well, finally, someone puts two and two and two and two and two together and they arrest Jane. Jane was arrested October 29th, 1901, and the trial started in the summer of 1902. Uh, during the pretrial, um, getting ready for it with her attorney. She ended up confessing to at least 31 murders, 
Uh, but she said it could have been closer to 100. I don't know. Oh my God. But the trial only took eight hours and there was a 27 minute jury deliberation before it came back. Y'all ready for it? not guilty by reason of insanity. Jane was remanded to the Taunton State Hospital, which is a psychiatric hospital. Uh, in the hospital, there were different reports that came back about Jane and how she acted. So some said that they heard her say she was not crazy and she got great joy out of um, getting people to believe she was crazy and that she really loved to watch the life drain from her victim's eyes and the thrill of bringing them close to death and back from death was just a, a sexual thrill for her. There were also a couple of attendants in the hospital that said she would sit in her room and yell out, get some morphine, dearie, we'll go out into the ward and have a lot of fun watching them die. I'm laughing because it's terrifying. During her stay at the hospital, um, she was overall a good patient. Uh, there was a point when she refused to eat because ironically enough, she thought her food was poisoned. I would call that karma. Her mental state did start to deteriorate as she got older. She died of natural causes in 1938. So what do you guys think of the story today? Uh, what do you guys think of the painting? I kind of like it. It actually stopped raining, so maybe it brought me some good like juju. This one was kind of terrifying to me because she didn't, she only had like one person that she did it out of Patriot. The rest, she did it just to do it. That's terrifying. There's people out there like that. That, oof, that, okay. Anyway, until next time, I want you guys to be kind to one another. And on your way out, please don't forget to like, share, comment on the video. It certainly helps me out a ton. All right. Thanks guys. Bye. Did I bring blue? Blue, abba dee ba ba die. Should have brought water, not coffee. It's hot. It's getting hot in here. I'm not taking off my clothes, don't worry. Now, she was born to, uh, oh geez, Violet, get it together. So he, he, there's a list, no, Jesus Christ. At this point, Mary, who's Mary? Nobody's Mary. She attends Cape Breton. <laughs> Gotta get some <started. laughs> Do I keep? Yeah, to Jane. <laughs> Oopsie. What did I do there? It, it there's there's some things that show up. Okay, on the op top. <laughs> um, but her mental state did start to deteriorate.